greetings. So I want to, you to imagine, if you will, uh, a nice vacation. Let's all go there together, right? Nice warm tropical weather, warm sand at our feet, the sun in the sky, turquoise water. Uh, I think we can all imagine that hopefully fairly easy. We like that. We enjoy that. It's no surprising that that's where the majority of people like to vacation. Given the choice, 90 to 95 percent of people hit the beach, head to the tropics. It's also where we choose to live. Um, the majority of the populations live within five miles of the coastline. If you've ever looked at a property um, and then looked one block inward, you can see that reflected in, in homeowning prices. So it doesn't then surprise us that we start our life in a watery womb. So we have this connection from a very young age. Before we're even in the world, we're experiencing um, some water acro acrobats, uh, ballet within the womb and connecting to this, this watery environment. It continues when we think about our own bodies. So 73% of our bodies are water. So clearly, we need water to survive and persist. And so does the Earth. The Earth itself, 71% of the Earth is water. So there's definitely a connection there. Hopefully, you feel that. Um, with this connection, um, we go to our coastlines. We enjoy this Barnegat Bay sunset picture. And just by you viewing this photo right now, your heart rates have slowed. Your synapses are now firing at a more pleasurable rate. You want to imagine yourself there. You want to relax and enjoy that time that you spend at the coastline and seeing um, all that the coasts have to offer. And we are fairly lucky that we have all of these ecosystems right here in New Jersey. But what happens when all of these people go to the coast is this. Pretty sad. These photos I took on the same island that I took our dream photo from on the beach in St. Croix. So we see waste, we see outfalls. It's well documented that there's degradation happening at these coastal ecosystems. But if you think it's only happening there, unfortunately that's not the case either. It's become such an issue that we even have a comprehensive restoration plan aimed at restoring Barnegat Bay which is right here in our, our neighborhood. So clearly there's an issue and somehow there's a disconnect, right? Because we know that we want to be at the coast. We want our kids to be there, these little girls enjoying the beach, um, walking on the beach, fishing. Yes, that's me at a very young age, fishing. Um, but somehow along the line, we have a disconnect and we have some degradation of our ecosystems and that's a really unfortunate issue. But what is fortunate is that, well for me, I love what I do. I am passionate and involved in every facet of my being, not only with teaching about this, but doing research in marine conservation. And so I'm lucky that I can go out in the world and try and recruit people to help me in this endeavor. But not everyone is as passionate maybe about conservation. When there's some effort involved, sometimes in your pocketbook from taxes or remembering to do certain things that are better for the environment, sometimes you can't quite get that message across. And so frequently there's three main ways that I, as a conservationist, need to reach out to people. And the first is through economic interests. So fisheries. You like to go to the restaurant and have your grouper sandwich, have your oysters on the half shell, have your scallops, whatever the case is. You want to enjoy that food, so then it's in your best interest that we protect that resource. And sometimes that means closing fisheries, um, having catch limits or fish catch sizes. The second way we can do this is evolutionarily. So sometimes you need to appeal to the idea that animals are going extinct. We've decimated some of the habitats, we've overfished some of the populations so that we don't find these animals anymore. So if we want to preserve the genetic linkages, we need to make sure that we do that in a way that's sustainable. And the last, when all else fails, I pull out the sad whale. When in doubt, appeal to people's ethos, their ethical beliefs. So it's not right that we would take these animals from the ecosystem, that we would abuse them, um, that we don't have them in their natural environment rather than um, really respecting what's necessary for these organisms. So in these three ways, as a conservationist, as a marine scientist, particularly here at Stockton with the Marine Field Station, my efforts and the efforts of my colleagues have been to these efforts of restoration and restoring our connection to these marine ecosystems. 
First step is with students. They're my easy target, right? They're already in school. They already have an interest. So when I get funding from groups like the Barnegat Bay Partnership, um, they're able to really help support some of the endeavors for monitoring. So in this case, looking at seagrass ecosystems, a vital part of the habitat, people might discount seagrass and think, well, it's grass. How important can it be? Well, if you want those flounder, if you want those scallops, where do you think they're living? In this, this habitat. So monitoring is a really important step. Secondarily to that, if I can't get my students involved, I reach out to the public. And so this event here was called a BioBlitz. I've done these in a couple different locations, and this is all about getting the public out there and censusing the, the animals that are present within the ecosystem. So just counting, collecting. So getting a citizen scientist, anyone here in the audience, from young age, you can see a little baby in the photo, to old age, we need your help going out and participating in these events and really gaining a respect for what this ecosystem has to offer. But sometimes monitoring and censusing, that's not enough either. We need to be a little bit more proactive. Another program here at Stockton is based on restoring these reefs. So collecting shell, putting this out on the reef, and once again, with the support of some of our local organizations, as well as Professor Mark Sullivan here and Captain Steve Evert, we are able to restore some of these ecosystems. So you here see some students putting out some shell bags. We see a little tropical fish that we caught. This is a win-win situation. All these animals can benefit from this ecosystem. Another way we can do that is by removing ghost pots. So in this, this uh, image at the bottom, you can see some of the animals that are caught as bycatch. A ghost pot just means that it's down there fishing, but there's no buoy at the surface, so we can't haul it up to, to catch whatever we're supposed to be catching, crabs, whatever the case may be. And in this case, there's a large-scale problem with all of these ghost pots collecting animals and them dying. So this is another really beneficial program that we're able to do here at Stockton to kind of counter some of these degradations that are happening within the ecosystem. And last, sometimes turning our fear into something fun. So people fear the sharks. Definitely when we talk about um, Mary Lee, who hasn't heard about Mary Lee, right? We worry about where is she? What's going on? Am I going to encounter her when I go swimming? Um, in this case, we can turn that into really citizen-based science that's important. So we go out, we track these. This is with Dr. Derek Burkholder um, with the Guy Harvey Research Institute. The students have gone out. They're going to tag the sharks. We now know where they are, what habitats they use, so we know how to protect them. So all of these methods are ways that we can get citizens back connected to our marine environment for conservation purposes. And if you think that maybe that's something outside of your reach, there are a lot more opportunities local um, for moving forward and hopefully garnering change. In this case, in Brigantine Beach, where they're posed to really be cutting edge with their decisions based on a bag policy. And you may think, well, how can that be related to marine science? A lot of the deaths of the marine mammals, in particular, are tied to the waste that goes into the water. You remember that picture, right? The refrigerator on the side of the on the coastline to side of the water, not a really good scenario. So in this case, they want to now ban the use of plastic bags or charge a fee. How you can help is just by carrying in your own canvas reusable bags when you go grocery shopping. It seems like a very simple thing, but you would be surprised about, about the pushback that that can garner. Instead of just banning or adding a charge, you can actually implement this yourself. Bring a reusable bag or use less. So rather than reduce, reuse, recycle, which I think we all learned at a very young age, the fourth option now is refuse. So just don't choose to take some of these disposable items because they end up in our waterways. And then the last way is kind of a whole new take on recycle. In this case, we're collecting the used shell so that we're able to infiltrate that into our oyster reef programs. So if we have the used shell, now we can actually have reef environments, support diversity of fish, and eventually that, that translates to the food that's on your table when you go to the, the, the restaurant or the grocery store. So all of these are ways that maybe if you've lost that connection, if you know that you appreciate going to the ocean, to the bay, relaxing at the beach with that tropical drink in your hand, Remember what also is, needs to happen, which is to restore those ecosystems. We need to counteract some of the negative influences that we're having in a positive way.
And if you're ever wondering, have you reached that point that you need to go to the coastline and enjoy some of that nice uh, ocean salty air, um, I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Moby Dick because it really speaks to kind of the mentality that I get to when I'm a little too stressed at work. There's too much going on in my life. And the whole quote basically says when you've kind of reached the rainy, dreary November days of your soul, or in this case, when you're sorely tempted to go into the street and knock people's hats off their heads, go to the sea. Go to the sea. Enjoy what the ocean has to offer, but realize that the ocean needs your help too, and that by doing restoration, it's your way to connect back and give back to the ocean that connects all of us here. So thank you.